basic dimensions, right? And remember what I said, I'd always rather be a little bit too big or too small. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out all our dimensions, make sure that it's square, and we're going to check it for level. Because remember what I said, building with panels forces you to be a better builder. Yeah, it's more difficult than cheap because the panels are big, they're square, they're strong, they come out just like they're supposed to. All right? So we're going to do that, verify once everything is correct, which we've now done on this deck. Then we're going to start striking lines to lay our plates. All right? One thing that you have to be aware of is what kind of overlap you have with the panels. In other words, is the panel running long all the way to the end of the wall, or is it running short? And we need to know this because when we set our plating, we're going to set one plate all the way out here flush to the edge. We're typically going to hold a half inch on the edge right here for the skin to drop down on. So when we snap a line, allowing for that half inch in a 2 by 4 we're going to snap a line at 4 inches. 4 inches around the entire perimeter to take care of um, uh, sealing the lower plate down to the deck. Okay. If this front wall that I'm working on is the long wall, it's going to go all the way back to here. And then the next panel that drops in, I'm going to leave at least a strong half inch gap here. Okay? I can fill this void where the skin drops down in here with panel mastic a lot easier than trying to seal it with a wood to wood tight fit. So don't try to jam this thing up right tight here. It makes, it makes dropping this panel, the front panel down, a lot easier. And I'll eyeball this in a lot of cases. If I'm running a really long wall and I'm laying down 12 foot boards, I'll just eyeball that thing five eighths of an inch gap, lay it on down. All right? The designer's given us our view of those walls, okay? So you're you're typically when you're when you're doing a structural job, you're gonna be standing on the floor deck, standing walls up, so it, so when it, a carpenter or an installer is gonna be standing on the floor, he's gonna be standing his walls up and so so this is the plan view that they're giving you of those walls. Okay. Okay? If you're working like maybe on a structural steel or timber frame or something, you may be installing panels from the outside of the building. So this A, B, C, and D would be Turned around, you'd be you'd be looking at the at the at the, the wall elevation from the outside. All right, so you need to keep that in mind, especially if your drawing is jumping from maybe you got a timber frame at one end of the project and it runs into a structural job at the other end. You know, so maybe your designer is always viewing it from the outside. So you got to remember what side of the panel you're looking at when you build it and stand it up, so you don't build your wall backwards. Uh, <laughs> Right, well, that's, that's the side you're going to be working on, you know. So, so uh, and you've seen them where on some drawings, where I'll show up, you know, on both sides.
tied to the uh, board and guide, other than just sitting on the plate. Yeah. yeah. But you want to make sure it's where you want it before you, you do that. Okay. Uh, once once we get a wall stabilized in there, we'll usually build fairly good sized sections of that wall before we'll actually tie it to the plate again because we may want to get out in that wall and rack it around a little bit. And once you provide it for him, there's an electrical space yeah. somewhere near the corner. Yeah. 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 Yeah.